thanks for joining us today. As always, we have an informative show for you, especially if you are planning to build. Find out how a construction project manager will save you a lot of headache during construction. But first, let's explore a four-bedroom country home located along Limuru Road. Each unit has three floors and five split levels. Take a look. This country home has three floors and five split levels. The front door is flanked by a decorative side light, giving it visual emphasis and bringing additional light into the entryway. The lounge enjoys maximum natural light from the wide glass doors and windows. The ornamental functional fireplace done in clay bricks and mazeras is the focal point of the room. All lighting accessories come with the house. Each unit has CCTV surveillance systems in place, offering strategically positioned cameras within the gated community, including the front gate and driveways, and there are discrete panic buttons all over the house. For purposes of security and convenience, an intercom system is connected to the guardhouse, so you will be able to speak to visitors first before allowing them into your home. In the guest cloakroom, a strip of contemporary glass mosaic tiles adds a decorative touch. All the bedrooms are in suit. This first bedroom is multi-purpose as it can also serve as a study room or home office if the owner so wishes. The developer took advantage of the understairs space to create wardrobe space. The mahogany staircase leads to the open foyer where you can relax and look down at the lounge. The dining area is spacious. Curtain and shear rods are already in place. The open plan kitchen is ideal as it provides an informal dining area for the kids and additional seating space when entertaining. The soft touch MDF cabinets contrast perfectly with a bright colored wall opening up the space. The gas line is already in place and there is provision for a four or six burner cooker. The neatly polished wooden parquet flooring accentuates the mahogany theme of the house while enhancing the appearance, style and versatility of decor. The family room has enough sockets and TV ports. The second bedroom has ample floor-to-ceiling MDF wardrobes. All the bathrooms have built-in shower niches that provide valuable storage space for shampoos and soaps without eating into an inch of floor space. The third bedroom is similar to the rest. The wall brackets complement the walnut chandelier suspended from the vaulted ceiling. The master bedroom is bigger than the rest. The vaulted ceiling gives this room a rustic feel and antique look. They also provide an opportunity to have higher than usual wardrobes. The spacious balcony offers exceptional views of the estate and surrounding serene neighborhood. In the bathroom, functionality was a prime consideration. Top mount sinks for him and her stand out against the granite countertop. The space behind the door is utilized by recessed shelving, adding architectural value to the room. The bathtub for one comes complete with a handheld shower. In the shower cubicle, a recessed shower shelf adds storage space for shampoos and soaps without taking away elbow room.
the domestic servants' quarter is in suit. The laundry area has a portable sink made of porcelain. Water is supplied by Karuri Water Services and there is plenty in storage with a 3,000 litre water tank sitting on the ceiling. Borehole water is used exclusively for common areas and gardening. Electricity is postpaid and in case of a power blackout, a standby generator is provided for common areas. Energy saving is evident as solar water heating supplies the whole house with a constant supply of warm water. Ample parking space is provided and the homeowner is allowed to install a carport. Landscaping is done by the developer. This house stands on one-eighth of an acre. Located along Limuru Road, just 12 kilometers to Village Market and 17 kilometers to Nairobi, this house costs 26.7 million shillings for cash buyers and 27.7 million for mortgage buyers. You may not think so, but sinks should form a part of your overall decor plan. Take a look. Whether it's a kitchen or a bathroom, one thing is for sure, you will need a sink. When remodeling, there are generally two main concerns, appearance and usability. It's therefore important to know what features and innovations are available so that you don't limit your options. Once you consider these aspects and blend them with your own wants and needs, you'll be better equipped to make the right choice. A top mount sink, also known as self-rimming or drop-in sinks, is installed above the countertop. These sinks have a rolled and finished rim that sits above the countertop and keeps it in place. It can be used with any kind of countertop material which makes it easy to adapt to your bathroom style. Top mount sinks are cost effective, easy to install and they offer more wiggle room for under sink storage. The downside of a top mount sink is the crevices that trap dirt, debris and bacteria which pose future risk if untended. Therefore, clean and inspect it regularly to avoid bacteria causing diseases. An undermount sink is installed below the countertop, yielding a smoother finish. It's customized as a hole is cut into the countertop specifically to fit the size for the sink. They require stands, braces or other special fittings for support. Undermount sinks are attractive and easy to clean. Generally more expensive than top mount sinks, they work well with lightweight bearing and water resistant countertop materials as condensation buildup under the counter can cause mold. Faucets must be attached to the countertop or wall and customization makes replacing it a big challenge. Vessel sinks sit on top of the cabinet or vanity rather than inserted like recessed sinks. These sinks are found in bathrooms as their size and style would not be practical for the kitchen environment. One of the biggest advantages of installing a vessel sink in your new bathroom project is just simply style. Vessel sinks are showstoppers as they add style, color and beauty to a bathroom. You will also gain more counter space by having a vessel sink because it takes up little space. It's easy to install because it can be replaced without having to alter your countertop. The downside of vessel sinks is keeping up with the latest designs and fads since they are more fashion aligned than functional. The exposed edge of the basin makes it prone to chipping and breakage. Stability is also an issue since vessel sinks are only secured at one point rather than the entire perimeter. Cleaning around the area where the vessel sink basin meets the vanity or countertop is another challenge and this area tends to accumulate lots of dirt. Wall-hung sinks are most appropriate if you have size restrictions and storage requirements. They are installed directly against the wall, helping to conserve floor space in smaller bathrooms. This will make your bathroom look bigger and the sink a lot easier to clean. They don't have a countertop or vanity, therefore towel bars can also be purchased separately to be used with this sink. Unless designed to conceal them, they leave plumbing drains and supply lines exposed. An optional concealed arm or wall support can be purchased to keep these items obscure. 
Also known as freestanding, pedestal sinks are sinks supported by a small column that sits beneath the sink. It's the ideal sink if you do not require storage space. Pedestal sinks are a smart choice for small bathrooms that are limited in space for a full-sized vanity. The sink and stand come in two parts. The sink is mounted atop a freestanding pedestal with designs following a variety of styles, from vintage to modern. The drainage and plumbing pipes that connect the faucet to water are hidden in the pedestal of the sink. The drawback is lack of counter space and storage that are inherent with pedestal sinks. Console sinks are almost similar to pedestal sinks, but they provide additional counter space and support the sink with decorative legs. They sit upon two or four legs for support. The plumbing drain and supply lines are exposed, so matching the material with your faucet is best for a more cohesive look. High-quality sinks in this style include architecturally styled legs in the same material as the sink. Vanity top sinks are a great way to add style and function to what would otherwise be just a bathroom cabinet. Vanities are typically a one-piece solution mounted atop a bathroom cabinet or fashionable enclosure. These sinks don't come with bases, but a coordinating base can be purchased or you can use the one that you have. Knowing the exact dimensions of your vanity cabinet is necessary to ensure a proper fit. Next week, we will look at the sink's compatibility to faucets, installation, and different types of materials. Understanding these points will make you choose the right sink that's compatible with your plumbing and faucet configuration as well as your lifestyle. We're taking a short break. Coming up is our interview on construction project management, so stay tuned. Welcome back. With all your other responsibilities, you barely have time to supervise the construction of your building. That's where a construction project manager steps in to assist you. And today we are joined by Mr. Oscar Ogunde. He is the chairman of the construction project management chapter at the Architectural Association of Kenya. Welcome. Thank you, Janet. For those who are not familiar with your role, please explain who a construction project manager is. A construction project manager is a well-trained professional who will assist you in the delivery of a project. Now, a project is defined as a temporary endeavor meant to deliver a unique product or result. In the case of construction, uh, a, a construction project delivers a physical structure called a building. Or, uh, in infrastructure, it could be a road. And what are the functions of a construction project manager in the building process? A construction project manager uh, works through the project life cycle. Now, a project would start at what we call an initiation stage. Now, that's a stage when you realize, uh, if you're in an organization, that there's a need to be met. At that point, that's when you need to start talking to a construction project manager, to take you through the initiation, He'll take you through the budgeting process, through the approval process, and eventually uh, through the identification of a contractor. Would you come in at the point where I am discussing the architectural plans with my architect? Yeah, actually the construction project manager should come earlier. The reason is a lot of times when you're talking to the architect at the very early stage, uh, the role is actually playing is a construction project management role. What are the specific services that you offer? A lot of people, like if you want to build a house, you'd come to me and say, I want to build a house. Now, a house can be many things to many people. Uh, it can range from a tent to a palace. Now, a construction project manager will help you to home in what your, your actual requirements are. Um, so that going forward, you are in sync uh, with what your needs are. Because what happens if you get your need definition wrong and you believe your profession is wrong, and the, when you end up getting the wrong, you'll end up getting the wrong product. What are the advantages of having you on board? You'd be talking to a professional who uh, would advise you through the project life cycle. Uh, our services would include identifying which professionals you require. An architect would ordinarily be one of them. Uh, others would be country surveyors, others are uh, landscape architects, green architects, and where to get them from. 
and how to get them. So he's supposed to be a partner uh, in the construction project journey. And do you tend to partner with the other professionals? Because I understand that there are some professionals who group together yeah. so that, you know, you pay, for instance, a, a figure of 7%, but you're paying for maybe four different professionals. What I find in the market uh, and, and, and generally the world over is that a construction project manager should be employed independently of the, of the other professionals. Okay. Because he's the CPM, as we call them, would be your advisor and would therefore check on the other professionals. Now, obviously, if he comes with his own team, there's a bit of a conflict there. Does a construction project manager have the same function as a foreman? We've got a construction project manager and then you've got a construction manager. A construction manager is site-based um, and has got a high, slightly higher uh, level of training uh, 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 than a foreman. Uh, because the construction manager works for the contractor, is uh, able to liaise with the contractor's head office and deal with things including procurement and, and, and all that. So it's lower than a construction project manager, but um, is higher than a foreman. You already mentioned budgeting, so you do offer advice on the cost aspects of construction. At the very early stage, uh, because of the skill, knowledge and experience that a construction project manager has, he would be able to give an indication of the cost of the project uh, based on square meter rate, based on the projects he has done before, and based on the project type. What fees do you charge? In Kenya today, we do not have a um, regulated uh, fee structure. We have been in talks with the Ministry of Works then, and now Ministry of Lands, related to having a statute uh, prepared and taken to Parliament, so that we can then have uh, our fee regulated. Now, the nearest we have is South Africa. They've got a statute that covers um, construction project management and they've got regulated fees and these fees range from 1.5 to 3 percent. And that percentage is of the gross project cost? It's of the construction cost. The difference is the construction cost is the cost of the building itself. Project cost would include the fees, the cost of finance, yeah, so it's a, lot, it's a lot wider. The construction project management chapter is relatively new at the AAK. So how has the industry responded to your coming on board? We have tried to uh, make ourselves visible and um, uh, advise uh, the industry of our existence. And as I said, uh, although the construction project management ch chapter has not been existent for a long time, construction project management services have been offered in the industry. As I say, sometimes uh, it's been the architect offering that service, at times it's been the QS offering that service, at times it's the engineer offering that service. The only difference is that when an architect or engineer or QS is offering that service, mm -hmm. you don't know, the, uh, it's difficult to tell where the role as a CPM stops and its role as a specific professional ends. Mm -hmm. And that's what I think is important as you go forward, that uh, this role is clearly defined, uh, these professionals are, are clearly identified and enumerated. Have you faced any other challenges within the industry? A lack of understanding of what our role is and therefore why somebody should pay us. Uh, as a trained architect, I'm aware that a lot of people, when they want to build in, they think of the architect. Yeah, so, yeah, so it's been good for the architect. But I think as projects become more complex um, and more people getting involved and various interests getting in, I think it's important that those roles are, are, are separated. Is there an official body to which CPMs belong? The world over, uh, we have project management uh, associations. I'm aware that uh, we have now have a PMI chapter in Kenya, mm -hmm. and uh, CPM is our intention to be affiliated to the PMI chapter in Kenya. And that PMI chapter is able to discipline CPMs who make errors? Yes, once you uh, become a, a, a CPM and you affiliate to the PMI, you are issued with what is called a code, a code of ethics, which you are required to, to, to abide by. Now, in terms of the extent to which you can dis be disciplined, I think, uh, because you don't have a statute as such, um, you cannot be taken to court. But what will happen is that you, you, you may lose your membership, and, and therefore you'll be deemed not to be of good standing uh, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a practitioner and a provider of services. As mentioned before, there are quite a number of professionals who are involved in the building process. And uh, I believe a lot of people would think that is a lot of paperwork to sign, especially if you have to sign a contract with each and every one. But would you advise a homeowner to get their lawyer to make sure that they have that paperwork? I think it's important uh, because of uh, how we are getting sophisticated that uh, we get the paperwork in order. And people think uh, having paperwork in place is, uh, shows a, a sign of distress. I don't think it is, and it's not in fact. 
it actually helps you to understand what your requirements are. Because as you go through that process, you may realize that you, the, the other person's understanding of your requirements is actually different from what you actually want. So it's a, it's a useful process. Is there a database from which I can get qualified CPMs? Yes, we are um, currently registering uh, corporate CPMs at AAK, and therefore that database is available. How often should a CPM interact with the homeowner or developer? When the project is still being conceived, uh, the interactions will be very frequent because you are coming to me. He'll help you go through things like the risks and how you can deal with them. There are negative risks and there are some positive ones. Which are those? <laughs> if I was doing a project, which is a donor-funded project, okay. and therefore the project funds come in dollars or hard currency, my local project comes, uh, my, pro my local, locally I awarded the contract in Kenya shillings. Mm -hmm. Now foreign exchange is a risk and it could be negative or positive. Imagine uh, the shilling gets weaker. So for the same dollars, I have more shillings. That's right. Yeah. So I've benefited, so I can actually do more. Do you manage the workers on site, the laborers themselves? No, we don't as construction project managers. Um, depending on the structure of the, uh, of, of the contract, you may find certain construction contracts, we have a main contractor. It's his business to manage his workers, and therefore we just pay him through the contract. What are the downsides of not hiring your services? You could uh, lose money or the project becomes too expensive. Uh, you could end up with the wrong product. Okay. Uh, you could end up not uh, using the right professionals uh, or not using some professionals you actually needed. Yeah, that's what the risk is. Okay. And you are there until completion of the construction? When construction is complete and you get your building, we have what is called a defects liability period. Okay, a defects yeah. liability period is a period in which any defects that come up are then rectified by the contractor. Mm -hmm. uh, normally it's six months. Yes. Um, some organizations or funders ask for 12 months. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Mr. Ogunde. Thank you, and uh, I'm happy to have been here. Let's get straight into the property tidbit of the day. This four-bedroom house is located in Savannah Estate, Donholm. It has its own compound and a detached servant's quarters. There is ample parking space on the Cabro paved driveway and a garden area at the back of the house. The monthly rent is 40,000 shillings. This apartment is located a few meters away from Nakumat Bamburi. Each room is fitted with ceiling fans and backup water is readily available from underground water reserve tanks. The monthly rent is 12,500 shillings. This master and suit apartment is located in Kileleshwa. It features a recreational area with expansive gardens, gazebo and a children's playground. Backup water is from the on-site borehole and a standby generator in case of power outages. CCTV cameras have been installed in common areas and internet connection is in place. The monthly rent is 42,000 shillings inclusive of service charge. We hope you learned something useful to help you in your home building plans. We still have more experts to interview, so make sure you join us again next week. Until then, find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Goodbye.